what was it uh, about this opportunity, especially coaching in the NFL, that appealed to you? Yeah, man, in all, in all honesty, had an uh, amazing experience. Alabama, five seasons there, and went to four straight national titles and got an opportunity to go to the NFL. Didn't ever see myself coming back to college football, to be honest. And um, you know, plain and simple, um, for myself, my family to come back, college football, a place I could uh, compete con um, consistently to win a national title, a place where we feel we could consistently um, coach first-round draft picks, and a place where we can um, truly go into any living room and um, be able to express the fact that your life um, is going to be a great life no matter how football um, works out because of the alumni base, the, uh, the connections here, the unbelievable resources here you know, at a university. So those three things on the table and the icing on the cake with Coach Lanning to be a, um, a part of you know, his expertise, um, that was it. So and, you know, maybe a little something to do with my, my wife being born and raised from the Pacific Northwest and her whole family and being back out on the West Coast. What did the past three years, what did you gain out of it? Oh, unbelievable. Just, uh, you know, multiple um, Cleveland Browns, Jacksonville Jaguars, Atlanta Falcons, the, the leadership I was fortunate to be around, um, the, the level of play, um, the expertise, the constant growth. You know, I love this profession so much because um, I can truly wake up every day of my life and know, you know, not just holding the, the players accountable, um, but myself to improve every day of my life in this profession. So that was incredible um, to be at the you know, um, literally the, the, the top of the game, you know, to be a part of that. And, and um, so couldn't, couldn't be fortunate enough to have that experience in my life. And uh, now it's about, you know, beginning the new chapter, which obviously we've already begun and uh, couldn't be more blessed and thankful to be here. How different or unique are some of the, the simulated pressure concepts that what Dan and Kirby were doing and what Dave was doing, um, obviously Matt was familiar with, compared to, I know Alabama was a, didn't do it as much, and now he's got Dave going to his clinic in a week. Um, but how different are some of those concepts and um, just different from what you were doing before at the college level, please? Yeah, I think, um, you know, we, we love we love simulated pressures. We love five-man pressures. We love blitzing. You know, we're going we're gonna to drop eight. We're going to, um, you know, rush four. So we're going to be a versatile defense at the end of the day. Um, and, um, you know, just the, 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 the growth and understanding and what we did at Alabama um, and I'm branching off Kirby. I think it's a collaborative effort, um, but what's most important that where we attack this process is not really who we want to be, who we can be. So, you know, it's our job and, and what I think makes a great coach is assessing the personnel and not be doing something because your past system did or, you know, past technique, fundamentals. So that's what we're in the process of doing right now. So, and it, it's a blast, you know, we're finding out who we are and who we can be uh, rather than who, you know, this is, we're not gonna be the Atlanta Falcons or Cleveland Browns or Jacksonville Jaguars. We're not gonna be Georgia, we're gonna be Oregon. You know, and this is going to be our brand of football, and we're building that together right now. We're in the process. When you were in the league before, and as a player, as, as a coach, how much did that familiarity help with your decision to come back, and how much has it changed since you've been, you've been here? Yeah, you know, um, it's, it's certainly a different level, a different game. I mean, the, um, it's the absolute best of the best, obviously, right, in the National Football League. So, um, but it is still football. You know, the field's still 100 yards. Uh, the, the objects and um, the concepts is, are still the same. So a lot of similarities, a lot of differences, you know. Um, you know, coming back as far as major differences now in just the past, what, four seasons, whatever that it's been, is, um, you know, getting used to the uh, NIL process and, and uh, adapting to that. And, um, but at the end of the day, you know, all the great uh, sales pitches out there, you know, are you developing players? Um, are you playing an elite, um, you know, offensive, defensive, special teams brand of football? And, um, you know, what's your ultimate big picture goal? You know, um, so I, I look at the, those things as the other the changes as more of uh, bonuses, but we're, we're representing one of the greatest universities in the country, um, some of the greatest leaders that have came through here. And, um, you know, all that is, is a major reason why we're all here to go attempt to go try to win a championship. So how did that inherit a, a talented group of, of guys at outside linebacker, DJ Johnson, Braden Swinson, to name a few. What excites you about the, the group that you get to work with here at Oregon? Yeah, I think, um, you know, love the fact that I know DJ was doing kind of a lot of things and sharing both duties and playing tight end and 
um, you know, after evaluating the film, um, uh, so the day we, we decided to take this job, you know, that was certainly going to change, in my opinion. You know, as long as the head coach signed off of that, I wanted DJ to play defense. So um, I think he's got the right mindset mentality. Obviously, you know, having to share duties and play both ways and stuff, there's going to be some stuff um, that we got to improve with him. And I've been really impressed of how he's attacked the process, especially the, men the mental aspect of the defense and the concentration to go get better. You know, this guy is on a mission to improve every day. That's obvious to me. Well, this so coach, uh, you know, Kevin McGee switching uh, from wide receiver or from running back to wide receiver, how does like a versatile player like him like give your linebackers experience, you know, when you're playing like other really versatile players around the country? Yeah, it's important, you know, I, I think really to, to answer your question, it's that's the, uh, the beauty of being at a place like Oregon. There's elite players, you know, all over the field. And so I think when, when um, you know, from a defensive standpoint, when we have to defend the offense, if, if you're defending average players, you're, you're probably not going to end up playing some average defense, you know. So to, to try to, um, you know, we're going to try to get as many elite players as here as possible. And, and on the defensive side, when you got to defend those guys, now, you know, the, you're gonna, you know every, in, this, in this conference, you're going to face elite players every single weekend, right? So you want to be doing that every day of the week. Played against Oregon. You coached against Oregon from your time at Cal and Washington. How much has this program changed? Because when you were at previous stops, it was the Chip Kelly, the Blur offense, and yeah. this program feels drastically different. What's just kind of your synopsis of? Yeah, I mean, obviously before coming here, you know, I was an outsider, but, but certainly a West Coast and Bay Area, East Bay. Um, and, um, you know, Oregon was a place, I mean, I went to De La Salle High School, you know, and, and there was a super strong connection there to Oregon during my career there. I highly considered Oregon. Um, you know, I think it, it's a national brand. You know, everybody knows that. You know, this is the, the headquarters of Nike, and it is different. You know, there is resources and, and stuff here that no other place in the, in the entire country can offer. So I think that's always been known. That's kind of an obvious thing and, and a major reason I'm here. So when you're playing at Otson Stadium, you know, if, if you got a family that has the ability to travel, they're going to choose that game to go to, right? Because one of the few places it's going to be sold out every single weekend. So. You know, just like a recruit and as a coach, you want to be a part of the, the you know, the highest regarded brand of football. And, you know, that's that's why we're coming here and, and why we're, um, you know, attempting to not just, uh, you know, do well, do well and, and kind of, you know, not finish the way you started is that's that's hopefully what we can do as a staff and as a team together is connect together so we can ultimately, you know, attempt to go win a championship. With Jeffrey Boss, obviously, can do a lot of different things on a football field. What what makes you guys feel like he best fits at linebacker for you? Who's that? Jeffrey Boss. Yeah, you know Jeffrey, um, he's explosive. You know, so um, I think as he adapts to the defense, the versatility of the defense, we're doing a lot of different things that they were doing in the past. Um, so you can see um, a guy that's you know as he processes and starts to diagnose his play starts to improve, and that's a really cool thing to see. I think it's a sign of a good player that someone that can um, possibly make a mistake and then follow it up, attack it, and then um, not repeat that mistake. So excited about his future, and I think he's got a, a, a definitely a chance to contribute towards our success. There's no doubt in my mind. Do you try to do you want to look to try to experiment in ways to get Jamal and Bennett on the field together? Jamal probably at a field safety kind of spot in that way, or do you think that they just rotate because they're both skilled at the star spot? Or I think it's our job, you know, to get the play, best players out there, and we're in the process of assessing that right now. So, you know, that's what's again our operation. You guys could probably tell if you've been to other places is very different than most places, and it put you know the the amount of different um, drills that you're seeing and the different team activities that you're seeing. So we're in the process as well of evaluating, and that's what we're doing right now. So that's why you see different guys on different fields and different positions. We want to find out, you know, um, who can do what role the best, and um, that's what we're in the process of doing right now. When you guys in the, earlier in the offseason were looking to add some of the transfers, what did Taimani bring to the table for you? you when we see him today, he's working with the second team already in that yeah, spot, and given, been, given the injuries at, inside the uh, defensive uh, line. Been, um, you know, pleased with um, – um, Taki's process, um, really his leadership skills has jumped out to me um, and, and uh, taken the run, the reins there of, you know, we want, especially up front, you know, we want the alphas to rise. And I think he's working towards, you know, that category. And he's got, he knows he's got some stuff to improve, um, uh, but he's certainly shown the potential of, 
you know, why he's, he's had the success that he has in this conference already. And uh, now it's our job to get him in the right place and um, try to create some one-on-one -on -one situations for him that I think, um, you know, after the work that he's going to put in in this process, that he's going to have a great chance to win. Talk about putting flyers in different positions, and Adrian Jackson's one of those guys. Just your thoughts on moving him from outside to inside and just... Yeah, I mean, one, one if... You know, one, it starts from a body type standpoint, you know, and um, and then, you know, you just I like we, 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 we try to do our homework, you know, on every single guy. So it wasn't just a, yeah. hey, you know, hearsay. Right. So we're watching every film that he had. We watched every single practice film and then go back to high school. I mean, the guy's playing safety at times and in the back end and doing stuff where, you know, showing some some instincts and some great A to B explosion. So. You know, and, and you might see him on the edge still. You might see him inside. So we're going to be moving guys around. You know, that's, again, the we're, we're not a defense that just does, you know, this is our front, we do one thing. We're going to be a versatile defense. And, again, that's our job, I think, to, to uh, um, in the process of assessment, getting the right people in the right places. What is the identity, what's the identity you want to establish here during the spring, Tosh? Like, you're going to feel on April 20. Sixth, the day after the final day of practice, you'll have right. had success. If what? Yeah, it it won't be based off of uh, you know mental errors, critical errors. We got to fix that, and we got to do that together. Um, we want to end knowing that we have a relentless defense, you know, and and that we feel good about um, installing in defense, implementing our fundamentals, our technique, our schematics. The end of the day, before all that, we got to have a relentless culture here on defense. And that's something we got to take great pride on, and really, you know, that that's our goal. So when when you turn on the film, um, we want to be known as relentless, all right. And so if, aside from anything else, I'm representing them. They're representing myself. We're representing an unbelievable university. We want to make everybody proud, and the way we're going to do that is attack and be relentless.